Okay, for those who weren't there in the last two hours yet, anybody? Who, who's new? Oh, two guys, great. So you, a whole slide for two guys. So Linux Sunxi is, uh, is a very active community that supports the Alwiner SOCs. Um, it, it, Alwiner SOCs are very cheap, very everywhere. There's loads of developments boards. You can get an Android device. You can install proper Linux on the supported SLCs. You can install proper Linux if you're lucky, which sometimes even happens uh, if you're lucky within an hour or so. So you can take this very cheap Android tablet and have it working in the space of an hour or so. And most of the time, as I said, two hours ago for those two guys, for everybody else, uh, it just takes more compiling than anything else. And it's the most free and in, yeah, competitive, um, not, not entirely anymore, but in, in, in this space, in the Android space, it is, let's call anything in the Android space that people might still buy today, even if they only buy it because it costs 35 euros. Let's call it competitive for what it could be. Um, we have, um, yeah, there's obviously a bit of work being done on the GPU. Um, the media uh, side of it is also becoming very free. There are uh, several people working on it. Um, for everything, most of the other things, we have either code or data sheets or both. And it's a big and active development community. There's just one big bastard there is always telling everybody to work on the wiki. So we might in future might do a, bit, a little bit less. And yeah, it's because of this big community and everything is there, should be there at least. Um, it is the target of choice for us in the hope that we wouldn't be that bound or we wouldn't have to do that much other work besides the graphics driver. And this thing is so popular, the development boards are everywhere, this, the tablets are everywhere as well. I actually hope that my work on Sunxi will create a good user base as well, uh, that people can easily install um, the Lima driver uh, and can easily install Connor shader work afterwards, that it's all provided for them and that it's easy. And it's easy to get new versions as well of the Lima driver and other bits of Sunxi. So yeah, the Sunxi disk driver, it's When I looked at this again, when I, I ten years ago I did this this Unichrome stuff. I got this big, there was this big blob of code that fell out of Via some way, and it was just one big mess of, yeah, just one big mess. And I went and created some structure in there. It was ten years ago, and in the meantime, the structure is pretty much everywhere. And you come to the arm world and nothing ever happened there. It's like I'm 10 years younger. It's like I still had hair and no belly and this and that. It, everything in the arm world display side, it never moved at all. They never heard about mode sitting, this order structure that came as brings. So yeah, this is a big problem for us now. We're going to go mainline anyway. We can't control what it is there. It's, it's an F, FB dev driver with extra octals on it. it it works a bit on Android. You need to have a special tool to call the right iOctal. It's, it's, it's not getting you anywhere. On the other hand, it's a lot of code uh, with a lot of bit poking. And all the bitwise operations are, of course, different. You cannot, you cannot poke at it and, or grab, uh, grab it for, for a register or something. This is something you cannot do with the original disk code. And it's really holding us back. And because I need this for synchronization, I need this for speed for Lima, for the command side of it. It is holding Lima back quite a lot as well. Um, and of, of course, Sunxi is, is the project of choice because everything is pretty much there. Um, there's only one chance, and there's only one driver that I could properly clean up and, and make work and show this off with, and that's, that's going to be Sunxi. All rock chip and this and that. I'm, I'm not going to run after that. Somebody else should do it, but we'll show the way with at least Sunxi. So yeah, cleanup work. Um, and on the other talk, I said I joined the Sunxi project pretty much June 2012 to finally get in Linux, to finally get VGA um, for presentation, something to demo it, not like with the original Mali talks. Um, and then, yeah, October 2012, I was actually doing stuff and started cleaning up. I, yeah, Sun, Sun 5e, Sun 4e, Sun 70 are different versions. Um, this one is a Sun 70. Uh, this QB board, uh, or the QB truck that I'm running on. As always with these firms, 
you get a big blob, and then a bit later you get another big blob, and you know it's the same code, but they just changed some things there for this new chip, and you either build one or the other. So the first thing you ever always have to do in this case is try to start to unify it, and this is what I did in 2012. Um, I spent two days. Um, they had one way of accessing registers through um, Bitfields. So this huge header file, and I spent two days on Google Translate, copy-pasting in the Chinese and trying to make sense out of it. I'm having enough trouble already. <laughs> I have enough things to do and things I need to do and want to do, and learning Chinese is not one of them. Um, so yeah, um, Hans Zier also did a lot of work. There's a lot of people fixing on it. He brought in Sun70 stuff. He, there we got HDMI audio. You work in HDMI audio as well, right? DVI For DVI, okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, I'll get back to that later. And, at the same time, I started working behind the scenes as well, because all this different bit poking is, is quite difficult to get fixed up. You cannot do this once. If you do this once and you ever want to get this reviewed, then the reviewer will have to do this work as well. And, but before you do that, because this is so error prone, you will have to do this a second time and compare the both results and see where you went off. Because you're doing that every few lines and it's thousands of lines over the code where you're figuring out what, is, what bit are they exactly poking here. And if you do this twice, then you can compare where you went wrong more. It's, it's something you never, ever can get reviewed. It's this sort of bit poking at the display level. You either build it up completely from scratch, or you can never get it properly reviewed. You should actually, but can be properly reviewed. But you should go and clean it up, because it's the best documentation you have. You should be able to grab it and find what was meant and what it was supposed to be doing. So yeah, maybe in, in a few weeks' time I'll just throw it out, um, my bit poking. Um, I, I just know. It, it won't hit Sunc C3.4. There's no point in it. It's just documentation. So yeah, then the plan structure. Yes, welcome to, welcome to mode setting. Um, and I need DMA buff and friends from Mali integration. I really, really need that. It's, if we can do fire and forget, then f forget it. <laughs> and first, Sung C3.4. Sung C3.4 is, is the, the branch in, in the Sung C kernel tree um, where everything is supposed to work. Um, mainline is getting there. It's getting there quite a lot. One of the big stumbling blocks is, of course, display. Um, I think we're already doing SATA, no? Yes. SATA is already in mainline. There's quite a lot in mainline already, so it's moving quite fast. Um, and I whined about this before. Um, there's this danger of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It, it's only it's only for development boards, mostly mainline. There's no tablets, and the beauty of it is you can buy a 35 euro tablet and put Linux on it, and it works. This is very important. We get loads of users that like we we need to keep that. And since when was when did, did I create the shitstorm on that? Three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Alejandro is working on it. Um, I forgot his name. Yeah. Somebody else is working on it on two different solutions. And we will get this conversion of, there's a, a, a device feed like file. It's more like an any file. Uh, it's called um, script.bin. That's all on the, uh, before every U boot. It's on the, on the boot partition. And this needs to be translated almost dynamically to device tree because you can't expect every user to, you would usually took an hour to go and completely go through that manually and then write this himself, then you can get no new devices up at all. It's, it's too hard. But finally, this is getting solved. So my plan is to gloss over a few things. Um, HDMI stuff, I hope that Hans will help me there. Or it, there, there seem to be quite a few people interested in HDMI uh, for audio. Um, CEC is also very important for a few people. Color space conversion I'm completely ignoring at this point. But I know very well that uh, um, the guys that are doing the reverse engineer driver for, for media stuff, uh, the Cedrus uh, project, they will need that. They will really need that. It's where you do the interlacing. It's where you're doing filtering. It's where you do color conversion. It's where 
you get to RGB and you can show it. And CVBS in this video has composite in this video. I'm not sure there's that many users, but once maybe when I get bored for a few hours, it probably is just get implemented. This is my slide. When I was writing this, I was just having so much fun, just imagining well, how much fun I would have talking about this. So let's just start on, on the left. Um, in, in the Sunxi Display Engine, they have the front and the end, and front end and the back end, and this is the name it has. Um, in, in, in KMS Talk, this is all CRTC, all of this here. Um, this front ends, I'm um, deliberately ignoring at this point. This is where you do the color conversions, where you do the filtering, the interlacing, that sort of stuff. You have one of those per pipe. Uh, the back end is where all the interesting stuff happens. You have quite a, f a few layers there, four in two pairs. Um, for a reason, there, I, I drew them as two pairs because only one of each pair uh, can do alpha. But you can have four overlays there. The composer, which doesn't it doesn't appear as that in, in, in the disk code or in the data sheets at all. Um, but I just needed a block there to name it, and Composer is a good name for that. It will always display black for you, or any color that you want. Um, if you want to have a frame buffer on that, you need to use a layer, any layer. And you can just attach a frame buffer there. So I completely ignored these and attached uh, RGB frame buffer there, and it just works. Less power as well, I don't need to power it up or down. Um, but yeah, you can do quite a few overlays there. Um, I have it as um, different color formats. Um, there's uh, two which do alpha, of, uh, one of each pair which does alpha, and the other one just doesn't do alpha, just different color formats. And I'm only yeah, exposing one for one because I need a frame buffer and it's not exposed like that. It's an unfinished thought, sadly, with KMS. This KMS planes and frame buffer coming in that should be something completely generic. A frame buffer that is in the back is just a plane that you can't move or you can't change that much. Cursor is just another plane. It's all, this, it's all overlays. It could be all overlays. And if it isn't, then who cares? It's in the same section. It's the same thing. Um, I have a really big issue with cursor in KMS because the cursor here is uh, the old style stuff. It's 1-bit, 2-bit, 4-bit, 8-bit color. And if you have 8-bit color, then you can have a palette as well. In KMS, the guy who originally threw this header file together, he never wrote a gra display or graphics driver before. So this is one of the points where it shows. Um, you can never request or ask KMS anything about cursors. It just won't tell you what is my color format, how large is my cursor, um, what are the limits of the display engine, which, which corners can I throw it. You just don't get any of that. You have to kind of assume that I'm talking to this DRI driver, so I probably support 64 by 64 in RGBA, or maybe ARGB, and then hope it works. It's not generic at all because of things like that. So I'm completely not using the cursor at all, and I'm forced because a ARGB, um, there is actually quite a lot still that would use a cursor like that, and it would be really nice and cheap, uh, especially on on ARM hardware to be able to use it. But I'm now forced to um, use one of the sprites, is what it's called in, in, in this talk, and in, in, in all winner uh, speak. And this is actually quite nice, these sprites. They're just overlays with a uh, size limitation. They just need to be power of two. And you get four of them, and you can throw them wherever you want. You can have whatever pitch you want. You can, can, you can put them, uh, they go maximum to 1024 by 512. You can just combine the four of them on one frame buffer and you can show uh, 2K by 1K very easily, but it's hard to expose something like that. And I need it for a cursor as well. So that's where I'm currently using my cursor. So yeah, it is quite an interesting engine. Uh, if only I could expose a bit more, it would be nice to use it all. Uh, when I was um, bringing this stuff up, um, I only created this thing is running the driver already. This is the KMS driver running at this point. Um, I only uh, hacked up the uh, X driver two days before FOSM, where the day before FOSM was me printing stuff and doing stuff for the dev room. Um, 
before that, I was just using a test utility that I few, badly hacked together a few years ago um, to throw layers everywhere, all over the place. Uh, this KMS planes all over the place. And it broke quite a lot on, on the Intel hardware that I was testing it on. It was never properly tested. Um, Villa Serial just added the test to KMS test a few weeks ago. Hmm. Um, in any case, with, I'm used that to very broken display engines. I was using VIA, which was an extension to the VGA registers. There's a bit there for your, if you need a big value, there's a bit there, there's a bit there, there's a bit there, and there's always broken. There's a new generation, there's another bit over there. It's, it's very hard to get this right. Um, and there's a lot of stuff where it goes off. If it's completely off screen, you might get memory corruption or something like that. Or you, your overlay shows uh, uh, strangely. Um, I was throwing this layer one layer I was showing, I was just throwing it as far as I could. This one plane, I was throwing it as far as I could. And somewhere around, what was it, 7,000, it was 1K wide. And when I moved it out to 7,168, then it went wrong. So that far off the screen. And if you add 1,024 with that, you have 8K. That's how nice this display engine is. It's 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 a really nice thing to work as a as an old school mode setter as a as graphics to display driver developer. This is really a new, really nice display engine, but it's as I will prove now when I talk about the other side, half of it's useless. Um, the next part, the LCD sees, is actually a CRT C, a CRT controller, but it's meant for LCDs. Yeah. Great. Well, whatever. What, as long as it has a name. Um, they have two different timing controllers. It's just a different way of programming the timing um, inside uh, each of the LCDCs. One is more meant uh, to be aimed at LCDs. The other is more main, um, meant to be used as a standard uh, mode setter for things like VGA and HDMI. Um, and you also, this just does the, the basic mode set. You just provide the timing details and you set your PLL up. Um, there is a big issue with PLLs in this engine. Uh, most of these blocks here, um, they are driven by one of two PLLs. The clocking of these blocks, you need to clock them down, uh, up and down yourself. You need to power them up and down yourself and you need a clock as one of two PLLs. The dot clock, the pixel frequency you want to push out, uh, which is a big part of what a mode line is, it's the dot clock and the timing is also one of those two PLLs. So you have an option. There's another tiny divider there. It's like it's up to 16, which is not getting you much. So if you want to drive two displays with different timing, you can put all the engines on one clock. You have to do that anyway. And then use one with a use the free one to get a proper uh, a proper dot clock that matches your mode line. And then you have to go play, you have to go use the other one and if it doesn't match at all, if the, 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 two, the two clocks for the, out, for the, the display or for the monitor don't match, then you have to go and play with the engines and clock them up and down. That's not really nice, but as the next part will say, it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Then, then it's fine. Uh, then everything, then everything, then everything is fine. Yeah, sure. But until that point, if you want two different images, if on two different displays, you're gonna have to play clock games with the engines, which is what you usually don't want to do. Yeah. You. Um. No, I think I think that ma it will manage. It will manage. It, the com this this composer bit will manage. It will manage for you. It it does, I think. But it it doesn't matter. I'll get there. I'll get there. So if you move further from the LCDCs, you see that HDMI is only ever tied to LCDC zero. Um, tablets come with HDMI usually. You have your tablet display, your the panel there, and you have HDMI sitting next to it. Um, so usually you're also using the panel there. Um, those two lines going from panel to VGA is the horizontal and the vertical sync. So the VGA there 
um, is using those lines as well. The TV encoders are also fixed to each LCDC. And this is really nice that they made uh, the TV encoders that flexible because they noticed that they lacked a bit of flexibility. But what are you doing with eight DACs that you can freely shift around as you want? Who uses that? You either do composite, which you only need one DAC, or this video, and you need two DACs. Or you do component, and you have, need three DACs, or VGA, and you need three DACs. So why not just fix that one? I'm, I'm sure they were trying to avoid a high frequency path there, but it's not really helping. And yeah, you have another panel that you can tie to the LCDC2. Now the issue is, and for, a, for a, um, a tablet, you have HDMI, and they always use the first LCDC to tie their tablet, to, to, to tie their panel to. You cannot get two different modes, and usually the, the panel in an LC, in a tablet is pretty limited in what it accepts, uh, and usually your HDMI monitor is a bit bigger and will not accept that either. So you can pretty much, in that case, only drive one or the other. And I was a bit late with discovering this because I could have actually rescued the QB truck there, but all Hall Winner hardware that does VGA uses those two lines as well, H-Sync and V-Sync. So if you want to use composite or as video, you're perfectly happy you can use both. Who does that still? So the whole lower part of this thing is completely useless, the way it's used today. If anybody would have gone and tied the panel, as always, LCDC1, then we would have been happy. But it's just not done like that. It's not how the original uh, boards that were sent out to the uh, hardware developers were, uh, the development boards, or the, um, what's the name, the reference uh, designs. It's not how they worked. Same thing for VGA. That's not how the reference design worked. Actually, QB truck is a lot better already. QB truck is the only one which does DDC. It's the only one with an I2C bus attached. Uh, and maybe there are a few people here that might know this, but in about 95, blue connectors started happening for VGA. That's because they got DDC then. If you buy an S3 card from 95 and you have a blue connector, you have two IO pins which you can. I, I know the registers for that. I spent an hour looking at the BIOS for that. Um, you have DDC, that's an S3, um, 3.64V, a very popular one. If blue connector, you have DDC, black connector, you don't. And after 95, everything is turned blue. Even on these uh, all winner devices, it's always blue. And the device that was first sold widely, the one that Tom QB, the maker of the QB board, was selling first, this Melee um, TV box, it has a blue connector. And if you, it's on a separate PCB uh, inside the case. And there's a wire, run, there's a set of wires running inside. And it's from the count, it, you know that two of the two wires on the one side, they are the DDC lines, they're data in the clock, and they go right onto the motherboard in the connector. And that's where it stops. There's nothing beyond that. And I've looked for a long while and looked at the reference designs. There's, that's where it stops. So there's, it, it looked all good when I was playing with the layers. I was thinking, yes, nice display engine, great. Great at snow, wherever they bought it, it's good stuff. It breaks at 8K. It will be a few years before we actually find all the limits in that engine. There's not really displays there yet. I will drive it, and we don't have the memory bandwidth anyway, so forget it. Um, so I was really happy playing with those layers, and it's just not breaking, unbreakable, until this very nice limit that I that you can very easily check for. And I was kind of wondering, where is the Chinese-ness in this? Yeah. How the actual encoders are tied to everything else. Half of this, it's useless. But lucky it was mostly copy-paste for me anyway as well. So yeah, what is working this clock gating, this, this tying one PLL? To, yeah, this, since we only need half, we have one PLL for the dot clock, one for the engines, anything else, it will never happen. We have a proper dot clock. We get close to what the display said it wanted for, for the frequency. So yeah, basic memory handling. Um, I am not using DMA buff yet because CRA, CRA the one who uh, wrote the FB turbo driver, only backported DMA buff to our standard driver, uh, to our standard kernel 
a few weeks ago. I haven't ported it to that yet. I'm using CMA still, which is just usually meant for just a few kilobytes left and right. I'm using this on whatever is given. I think on this one, I've just put it to 64 megabytes. It's just happy. It works. I had a bit of fun with gem with that, but I think it's more the gem interface than actually tying it to the CMA. Yeah, dot clock works because <laughs> I figured out that I could just use one and use the other for the other. Basic mode setting works on VGA and HDMI. Yeah, supported encoder connectors, VGA. I even have load detection, which is really intrusive. They, did, they didn't really test that well, I think. I have to set registers almost like talking to composite. And if, if your display is active, it's, it's ugly. It's, it's really ugly, but you usually don't do it that much. And I need to play with the heuristics a bit. And then it will be, will be better. It's, it wasn't looking good a few days ago. But it's a heuristics thing. It is dependable. We can tell whether there's a cable or not. And that's quite important because not much hardware does this properly. Uh, usually you have to guess. And you don't, if you don't have EDID, which we, apart from this board, don't have, then you're, you're lost. Yeah, HDMI basics work. Um, I'm not doing EDID yet, but I'm going to do that just together with VGA. I still need to impl implement those two. Uh, cursor works, but I told you, one, two, four, eight bits that I have to use these. Um, forgot it. I actually forgot it. Sprites, exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah, and KMS planes work all the way up to 8K. <coughs> So yeah, to do on our on our standard everything works driver. Um, I started DDC. Um, I started LCD uh, LVDS because I, I told you in the two talks ago that I mostly travel when I'm traveling or anywhere else. Then there's a USB cable going from my laptop to a tablet down there. So DDC, I can't really do that on the move. That doesn't work on a train. You just can't lug a monitor around. So that's why I started the LCD LVDS as well. Um, Sun 5V is a really cheap one. Um, they have a few changes. They only have half the pipe. That's one thing. That they, they did it for another reason, but they could have just as done on everything else as well. So they only have this one pipe. Uh, yeah. No, no, there, there's a, there, there, I'm ignoring that one as well, yeah. That is, that could even be, I think it can be put before this front end thing that I'm currently ignoring. So that's there as well, but I'm currently ignoring that. Oh, but don't don't say anybody. That what? You can just bypass it, that's very good for Yeah, I can just tie an FB to all of those blocks inside the, the back end, any FB. It's, it was just being used all the time for no reason. It was trying to, um, filter and scale and and do um, color space conversion on a one to one RGBA or a one to one RGB frame buffer. This is pointless. So yeah, I still need to hook up interrupts that don't have V blank or something like that. VGA load detection should have an interrupt. It might be interesting whether it works or not. And I still need to hook up palette so that you can change the colors on, on this. Actually, although even the, the sprites can do palettes as well, it, it's, it's quite nice. This whole composer has quite a lot of layers that we can play with. So my plan is the next few weeks to clean it up and release this and get this out to people so that they can start using it. And after that, we will be looking into mainlining it. I um, need to start working with device tree. And yeah, I said I was begging Martin Langhorst to get the MA fans upstream because I will need it. And this will also need to be done. And that's it. That was the Talk. Where's the microphone? What are the chances of having two different users running in the same time on the same cubit? Which one is a different model? Assuming one of them. Oh, you can you can forget about attaching two monitors. You just can't. You just can't. You just can't. VGA is always tied, H and V sync, always tied to LCD zero. This is just bound to that. You just can't. If you have a panel, they, they don't design the devices with the panel on the other side yet. Maybe after this talk. Yeah, you can. If if I if I was a bit earlier with this and I'd noticed this earlier and could have told uh, the QB guys, please use H and V sync from this engine, these lines, yeah. then it would have worked. 
Indeed. Um, how is it wired? Is it inside the chip? Or, uh, no, it's on the board. It's on the board. Yeah, so uh, if you, in if effect, you any little dev board developer could, could the wire the, the panel and the VGA? I think that maybe, I, I haven't looked at it in, in close, but most of the Olimax boards, they have a connector which I don't th they don't do DDC either, but I think you can find lines maybe. I haven't looked close. You can maybe find lines and make it work that way. Okay. Just an IO, one of the I/O pins, which you then program correctly. So on, on, your, on the Olimax balls, that's wired uh, the classic way. On the what? On the you, you, you talked about the Olimax. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oli, Olimax doesn't doesn't do VGA at the moment. You have a you have a small breakout cable, and you might be able to f to wire this up as as well. Okay, thank you. You might be able. Um, it depends. Maybe it's used for something else already, but on all the other devices that do VGA. That's how it's wired up. That's how uh, the reference design was. So unless you fix it that way, you're not using all of this, and you only get a, ever one. You only ever get to drive one monitor. Anybody else? Everybody asleep? Shh. Get, get, get the microphone that it's on on the stream. I've seen in the QB wiki that someone used the uh, IO pins to drive VGA. IO pins to drive yeah. VGA? Yeah. No, they will be using the DAC. And yes, they are IO pins. Um, these chips you usually have four functions per pin. Yeah, they, you can program and so these, dozens these and dozens. H and V sync um, for LCD zero uh, are one IO pin each and their fixed position. And it's an IO pin if you, if you program it differently. If you say it's, you're now, what is it? Zero is a standard IO use, uh, two is a special use, which is u in this case H and V sync, and there will be two others usually. So these are IO pins as well, but it's only one pin that does uh, H sync or, or horizontal sync for LCD zero, LCD C zero. It's doable. Olimax, open source hardware, you can go and do it. But nobody's done it so far. And if I'd been a bit earlier, maybe we could have rescued the QB truck. Hand it, hand it to the front, please. So I just checked the Olimax A20, the, the, large, yeah. uh, the large one design, because uh, that's the one which has the VGA breakout. Yeah. Of course, they followed the reference design, so they got it wrong. But yeah, the yeah. V-Sync and the H-Sync of the other LCD controller are rooted to an header. They're available. Good. So, you it can be so if you make your own cable, it can be fixed. It's and fixed. you can probably throw in DDC too. Yeah, you can probably have two displays on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Olimax open source hardware. See? You talked about a problem with DDC. Is DDC not connected yeah. to the chip? Yeah, it's a blue connector everywhere. No, but, is but it for no reason. But it's not. There's no connection from the blue connector to the chip. There is one to the board on this one device, but not to the chip. Yeah. Not to the chip. Okay. Otherwise, you could go for bit banging or something like that. Yes. Yeah. There's just nothing. There's just nothing. I spent a lot of time on a multimeter and testing all the I opens and see whether whether anything changed. <laughs> Running this through through a script and see whether whether the voltage changed or not. No, it's not there. Unless on the QB truck, that's there now. And yeah, Olimax, you can do whatever you want with it. You can fix it there. Anything else? <laughs>